This story is an absolutely, absolutely incredible journey of saving a little five-year-old boy from South Sudan. We first met Paul Taylor Ezekiel uh, from South Sudan on our last mission trip, uh, Mission Hope South Sudan, and I went over uh, with our team, uh, myself and our co-director, uh, Atem Garang Joey, and we went on one of our regular mission trips uh, to bring medical supplies and school supplies uh, to the village, to Atem's village in South Sudan, Paliao. And while we were there, we had already heard that Bishop Ezekiel, uh, Bishop Ezekiel is the Episcopal Bishop of Twitchies County, uh, the area specifically that we work, and we had heard a few months prior that Paul, Bishop's son, was diagnosed in December uh, 2012 with a brain tumor. It's a uh, brain stem glioma, which is extremely serious. And we heard that the child was very ill. So while we were there, we were anxious to run into Bishop and hopefully get an update on Paul because we weren't sure uh, what his diagnosis was at that point. And we were trying to catch up with the bishop the whole time, and we kept bypassing him. And I, by the end of the trip, I actually didn't think we were going to end up running into him. And I really wanted to because I was very worried about Paul and what I had heard back here in the United States. And right at the end, two to three days before we were ready to leave, we left the village and went back down to the capital, uh, Juba, South Sudan. And lo and behold, as we pull up to the Episcopal Church guest house, there is Bishop Ezekiel. And we were just thrilled uh, to be able to see him. He's a dear, good friend. And we usually visit with him uh, in the village every time we go. And there he was. So we were so happy to see him. But then also we inquired right away about Paul and asked how Paul was doing, and Bishop was extremely upset at that point and concerned because Paul was in very bad condition uh, in April. So from December to April, Paul had done a huge decline, and we were able to ask Bishop uh, what Paul's condition was at that point. Well, after we had seen Bishop, and we spent two or three days with Bishop, myself and, and Atem and some other project members that were with us, we were able to spend two or three days with the bishop and it was his idea for us to please fly back with him from South Sudan to Nairobi, Kenya, which is a, sh it's a short journey. It's a little bit over an hour in the plane and that's where we have to fly to depart back to the U.S. and that's where the bishop has his family residing. Because of the Civil War, he had gotten his family out of South Sudan. Uh, a few years back and so he was on his way to Nairobi as well and he said please come to my house and spend two days with us which we had before we were taking off and meet Paul and see him because we hadn't seen Paul at that point and meet my wife and my family and he said to us please take video if you can see Paul and take video and see how he's doing and bring that back with you to the United States that would be great so that's what we did we flew um, back to Nairobi, Kenya, and uh, the bishop actually went the next day. We met him there, and we spent two days at his house. So this was going on late April 2013, and we spent two full days with uh, little Paul Taylor Ezekiel. He was four years old at that point, and uh, in a terrible condition, and we made, took a lot of video. We took video of the MRI and the CT scan, and uh, Paul was, he was falling at that point, losing his balance, uh, not able to stand more than a few steps, uh, vomiting and crying and in a lot of pain, and he was not hardly eating at that point. So that's when we first saw him. And, and for those two days, uh, the only thing, you know, Bishop Ezekiel is an incredible man because here's someone who has literally dedicated his life uh, to the church in South Sudan. Uh, he, for 30 or 40 years, through the civil war in South Sudan, 
he risked his life and went around his country uh, to preach the gospel and to bring hope and love and peace and specifically you know to the lost boys of the Sudan and we have so many lost boys here in the United States living with us especially here in Sioux Falls and this bishop has dedicated his life for 40 years and that's what uh, that's a big that's a big piece of this because when we see him in the village here he is living in a mud hut and out with the children thousands and thousands of children and singing with them and bringing them hope uh, telling them that Jesus loves them and uh, just trying to encourage the children and he said to me Lisa Marie and, and Atem was with me he said I've given my whole life uh, to bring love and peace to the people in South Sudan uh, in a, in a war-torn country he said please I do what I can for the children and now my youngest son is sick with a brain tumor please 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 help uh, save my son this bishop um, does, he gave his life and does not get a salary. Uh, he gets the little bit he's able to get from the congregation, the Episcopal congregation around in South Sudan. And uh, knowing that about him and being a good friend and then seeing Paul's condition and his wife Rebecca was there and Rebecca has been trying to take care of Paul for months uh, since December. Uh, we knew right then that our mission on this last trip turned into something else. It, uh, we thought we were going for one reason, our, our typical regular mission, and we saw that it was really for a, a bigger reason, a bigger cause. It was to see what we could do to save a young boy's life and to help the bishop's family. So uh, after two days, we returned back to the United States. Uh, I believe that was uh, it's about April 26, 2013. And I remember uh, the whole plane ride back, and it's basically, it's a two-day travel. Um, I, th that was on my mind the whole time. And uh, my good friend, Rhonda Morse, uh, who just partnered with us and helped tremendously in this effort, she came and picked me up at the airport. And uh, we had just left the airport in Sioux Falls, and I said, Rhonda, there's something uh, very important uh, that's happened and uh, she said what and I told her I said Bishop Ezekiel his uh, four-year-old son is diagnosed with a, uh, a brain tumor if he does not get help uh, he will die and he will die a painful death the first thing was let's get this video together and all this footage and try to put it out in the social media we put it up on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook and social media and just reaching out and asking the American doctors and anybody if they could please help and guide us in the right direction. We try to find a neurosurgeon and, and some help for Paul. So we are really in a great uh, condition and a great need and praying hard that God can open the, the windows for us uh, to get a good Samaritan people, a good people of uh, of good wishes that can help us raise some money so that our, our son can be operated. We get back to the United States and this was an incredible, it, it was, I call it a race against time. Um, it was a, an incredible race against time and we knew there was a lot of pieces of the puzzle, I like to say, to put this together. Um, the first thing was to uh, get the video out, which we did within a couple of days, and, and put that up. And that video, by the way, uh, is pretty tremendous because uh, we, we shot a great piece with the whole family, with the whole family asking for help and showing the MRIs. And the first thing we did is we contacted a local neurologist uh, in the area and uh, got her the video and I had still pictures of the MRI uh, to the best of our ability because we do not have uh, uh, big medical training and she kids around with us that we took some of the pictures backwards and upside down which uh, now we kind of get a chuckle out of but she looked at that and immediately uh, said that uh, you know Paul had a brain stem 
uh, tumor, which is extremely serious, and there was a huge concern over hydrocephalus. What she did is she passed that information over to Dr. Wilson S. Fora, who is a Brazilian, uh, a Brazilian neurosurgeon, and he right away uh, saw the information and they knew that Paul did not have a lot of time to live and the hydrocephalus, which, is, which uh, was a huge concern, uh, which is a buildup of uh, water fluid on the brain. And uh, Dr. Asfora right away gave us tremendous hope because he right away said that he would do the surgery for free and offered his services for free. And uh, that really got the ball rolling and we were excited about that and immediately got the word back to Bishop Ezekiel, Rebecca, and the family that uh, we have a neurosurgeon on board who will do the surgery for free. So that was the first step. And uh, then part two of this whole journey and race against time uh, began after that. A piece of the puzzle or component of that is that we needed to find a, an institution. We needed to find a hospital uh, that would take on Paul's cause as well. Um, we knew that this was going to be uh, obviously a, a, a lot of money and, and, uh, and complicated. There's a lot that goes into it. So we were looking uh, for an institution to take on the cause and we did put a uh, couple of uh, humanitarian process, uh, processes in place, paperwork at a few different places, but the next big hurdle uh, was to get visas for the family. And that became a huge undertaking, uh, especially an African family uh, coming from that particular region uh, in South Sudan and Kenya. Normally, uh, that takes six months plus to happen, and we knew that this was a race against time. We had to get them here. So it was a matter of uh, getting the visas, getting emergency medical visas. The first step to that was that the family was in Nairobi, Kenya, that's where we left them, and we had to get them back over to Juba, South Sudan, to the embassy over there, the South Sudanese embassy, for them to get, first step was South Sudanese passports. Uh, so that was step number one, and this was all uh, we were very concerned because that meant little Paul getting on the plane and we were very worried whether he could even travel uh, was a huge concern. So the family did have to go get a doctor's note and this was from the original doctors who back in December did the MRI and CT scan of Paul. And so the family did indeed uh, fly back to Juba, South Sudan, which was difficult because that uh, that's when the fundraising began. Uh, there needed to be funds to get them tickets to fly them into Juba, South Sudan. So every step of the way was not easy and Paul was not feeling very well for that flight. But they made it back into Juba and they were able to get their South Sudanese passports in, in under a week. It was getting them the uh, emergency uh, medical visas. This was a huge undertaking and required a lot of paperwork and a lot of, a lot of letter writing. The first thing that we had to do with the uh, emergency medical uh, visa is we had to, which is, which is the usual process, is we had to provide the embassy with a letter of invitation and making sure uh, that our embassy knows that um, our organization, which is Mary's Project Mission Hope South Sudan, was going to take care of the family and that we would be responsible for uh, plane travel, uh, accommodations and food travel in the United States, uh, incidentals that the family might need, and that we would be responsible taking care of them. Uh, they would not be responsible for funding. So we had to get that letter over to them. That was uh, kind of the easy part. Uh, the second letter was a little bit more difficult, but Dr. Asfora uh, was amazing and he wrote the letter for that and the uh, neurologist, uh, the, our wonderful woman neurologist uh, helped with that as well and Dr. Sfora wrote the letter that he was personally uh, going to be responsible for taking care of Paul and taking care of the surgery and his medical treatment and that this was being given by Dr. Sfora at no cost. 
So these two letters uh, went over to the embassy, but to get that done was no easy task. Uh, we had to seek the help of Senator John Thune's office here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and we were grateful to Senator uh, Thune. Uh, Sarah Hansen in that office worked tirelessly with us for at least a month, four to six weeks, uh, to get this to come through, to push it. When the embassy, the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi uh, was wonderful as well, but when they first granted the interviews for the family, they had given a date in August, and we were dealing with this in June, and we knew waiting two months just was not even a possibility. Paul, Paul's time was ticking away, and we, we had a hunch that the hydrocephalus, the water uh, buildup in his brain, was building up. And the only way we knew that is I was having daily uh, email contact with Bishop Ezekiel and a couple, few times a week on the phone, and I was constantly asking him to update us on Paul's condition. Paul had not been given any medical treatment since December, since the time of the original uh, MRI. So we were only going by, what's Paul's condition now? And the bishop was telling us he's, he's hardly walking at this point. Uh, he's crying through the night. He's not eating at all. And it got to the point where Paul wasn't walking at all. And we, in turn, were delivering these messages to the uh, neurologist here uh, and getting that information to Dr. Asfora. And just from hearing that, they were able to tell, because this is what they, they do. Dr. Asfora uh, has been doing uh, uh, brain surgery now. He's a, a neurosurgeon uh, for 20, 30 years. So 